This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Cones on the Hogstein Network. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 5, Episode 15, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington on all your social medias. And I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life. As part of the Mighty Volkstein Network on audio and uh, the YouTube here, of course, on video. So, uh, Washington is playing the New York Giants here. Washington is a minus four on the line. Okay. On there, they're expected. But I just remember that the New York Giants have beaten Washington five straight. So, kind of strange, but it's at FedEx Field. Uh, there's going to be lots of fans there, I'm sure, not wearing different colors on there. But I don't know. I, you know, this is really a huge game. And I know people go, oh, it's too early. Yeah, you start 0-2 at home, both games, ooh, that's a big hole you're in. And you've lost your quarterback already, so you're playing the second guy. You lost his division game. But having said that, if they end up going into the last five games of the season, like 5-7, and seven, well, you play five straight division games. That's the weird quirk of the schedule. We'll still give them a chance, unless they're 3 and, you know, yeah. 10 they're going to have a chance because of that end schedule. But that doesn't mean it helps you any here. And they've got Buffalo coming up. they got Kansas City, Green Bay. I mean, <laughs> woo, this is a New game. New Orleans was pretty impressive. I know they play them. I mean, yeah. they've got this some – They've got. I mean, even Denver. Denver looked impressive. I believe they still play them. There's, yeah. some, uh, there's, some, uh, there's some hard ones coming up. Um, but, yeah, you got to go. you gotta, you got to win this game. And unfortunately, as much as of a klutz and a mediocre quarterback as he is, Daniel Jones has owned the Red, uh, the Washington football team. Uh, yeah. He's had very good numbers against this team. Um, you know, it just – I don't know. Their, de- their defense has improved. Saquon's back. I know he didn't really do much yesterday uh, against Denver. Um, obviously, they spent all that money on Kenny Galladay to be a number one wide receiver. They still have some pretty good depth at wide receiver. I mean, they're they're a pretty decent team. I just think that they're not very well coached. Joe Judge is not a very good coach in my eyes. Um, I don't know. It, it, here's the thing, Rick. We saw Sunday against the Chargers. Logan Thomas caught a touchdown, and I think that's about all he did. Uh, we didn't see J.D. McKissick uh, very much. Uh, Terry had one or two nice catches. Uh, I He had a uh, catch of the week highlight. I'm, I don't know how he caught that ball, but it, it doesn't make sense to me. It seemed like in the beginning of that game, it was Scott forcing, uh, trying to justify his, his, their pick of Deami Brown and it wasn't working. I know they went to Adam Humphreys a couple times. Like, I don't know. It just didn't seem like the people that helped you the most last year were targeted. And that has to change if you're going to beat the giants. You need to rely on the people that brought you to the dance. Yeah, I, I agree. I just saw all these people and I was like, where, where are we trying to go with the ball here? And we should go to these guys. You know, Logan Thomas, nice touchdown play on there. Gibson had a good day running the ball until he fumbled, the fumble. lost the game, but he was playing well. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a shoulder injury again. I'm not sure how much it is, but it's, it's listed on the injury report. Uh, that was the only he and Fitzpatrick only two on the injury report. Uh, but, you know, McKissick's got to be back out there. I mean, I don't know if Scott Turner was was out guessing himself. Was he suckering L.A. for the second half of a game like his dad would do? I don't know. I didn't like the game plan we called it at all. So this time I think Taylor's going to go to guys that maybe Fitzpatrick wouldn't, which means he goes back to guys like Terry and Logan, you know, and, such, and they play more McKissick. That I expect a different game plan against the Giants. Giants are a better improved team. I was thinking, I was thinking at first if Washington was a winner, Giants would be the toughest one. But after watching Dallas lose its opener, ooh, Dallas looked much better than I thought they would. So I think they're a real team to watch again too. And hey, right now Philly is one and zero and leads the division. Yeah, so- <laughs> Philly. Out of everybody, <laughs> Philly is the only team that won this week. That's incredible. Jalen Hurts, you know, looked okay. So Washington's got to win this in a division. They've just had a hard time with the Giants in the uh, last three years. Yeah. Uh, defense has got to play uh, Sweat and Chase Young and 
put that pressure on him because otherwise Daniel Jones shows he can beat this this Washington defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the linebacker, Washington's linebackers need to play it much better. But Ben St. Juice, man, they had a game plan. Oh, my God. They picked on him so bad in the Charger game. Yeah, it was like the second, third play. They had a mismatch, and they kept going to it. Yep. And they stopped. Some of those throws, to be honest, some of those throws and catches were pretty damn good. Yeah. If anybody would have given up some of that. But they, you, you can't leave that kid on the island anymore. And their secondary – I mean, William Jackson made a couple plays and an interception, but he got beat a lot too. Mm-hmm. You know, Fuller didn't have a very good game. I, always- I didn't understand the coverage. I, I really didn't understand the secondary coverage. And look, we all know that the secondary is not going to be able to cover for as long if there's no pressure by the defensive line. But I, I didn't understand. Like, it was such a soft zone coverage, and I hate that. It doesn't matter what defensive coordinator comes in here. They always give them that 5- to 10-yard cushion at the damn line. Just go play one man on man. I watched the Rams game on Sunday night, and Jalen Ramsey was all over the damn field. He was like a linebacker playing corner, and you you see why that guy makes so much money because he's a hell of a talent. I, and and look, I understand not everybody's going to be like Jalen Ramsey. They're not going to be born with that natural talent. But damn, dude, like it's like I said, it's it's not reinventing the wheel, man cover the guy that you're supposed to that uh that third and 16 that they converted man uh, there were three guys in the area and and i it was either keenan allen or um mike williams just went right up right in between all three of them and caught the ball like come on keenan allen and mike williams are a good duo and they have a hell of a quarterback now obviously i don't think daniel jones is as good as as justin herbert but galladay shepherd like those guys they're they're on par with a with a keenan allen and a mike williams so it's the secondary needs to step up. The defensive line needs pressure. The secondary needs to step up. Oh, and by the way, they have a former Pro Bowl tight end that they signed from the Vikings, Kyle Rudolph. So your linebackers need to step up and, and play some coverage on the tight end, which we know that this team has never been able to cover tight ends. Yeah, and their run defense up the middle has was bad last year. It was bad in the opener. Mm-hmm. And Ron Payne and, and Jonathan Allen, I don't know, man. They, they're first-round picks, and, and you know Allen got signed for a big deal. But they just they didn't do anything there. And now, what does Barkley do in this game? He was 10 for 25 yards in the opener. That doesn't scare me. Caught one pass. He probably should not be playing yet. I don't think Saquon's ready. I think they're just kind of forcing him in there. Yeah, and that's not good. But basically, Jones was their main weapon in the against Denver in the first game. But they've got to plug that middle. They got to be playing three linebackers instead of two. Is what it looked like all the time. Or oh. linebackers crossing the whole field to make plays uh, on there. Those are the kind of things, you know, you've got it, but you got to get the pass rush, no pass rush, no pass defense. And they're going to do the same thing to Washington that uh, LA did. Oh yeah. It's so, all season. Every team is going to play them. It's going to be a three-step drop. It's going to be, you know, hold the ball no more than two and a half seconds and get it out of your hands to prevent that pass rush. That's the one way to negate a pass rush, especially if you don't have a good offensive line, you know, is get the ball out of the quarterback's, the quarterback's hands quickly. It's going to be a lot of short passes into the flat. You know, now obviously Her- Herbert had all day to throw back there, and that's why he was throwing dimes for 15, 20 yards at a time, it seemed like. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like the Giants and Washington are are kind of the same team, just with different problems, if that makes sense. I know that the Giants defense is very well, is very good. The the Washington defense has the potential to be very good. We've seen it before, but you know they have a quarterback who's man mediocre. We have a quarterback who we really don't know. We've only seen him in two games. Um, you know we both have comparable wide receivers. I feel like they're they're very they're very similar teams, just kind of with with like I said with different issues. As much as we hated on the defense in the opener, you know they gave up twenty. They would have given up thirteen. You know without a giving touchdown the other way game it wasn't ugly but it wasn't as bad as we thought it was yeah but but they also got some gifts let's look at that montez sweat fumble that went 15 yards in a spiral forward and somehow somehow went out of the back of the end zone for a fumble and they were what was that like like 14 of 17 on third down 14 of 19 14 like that was crazy and the only reason they didn't convert on that last drive was because they kneeled down yeah so the line is Washington minus four, the over under 43. I am taking the Giants and the under because uh, until Washington really scores, I would take the under every week until 
until they prove it wrong. I think you're going to go under more than you will over this whole season. So I, I just think the Giants are going to win this one. And there'll be chaos in the streets around Washington. But, uh, you know, I was thinking maybe – I thought they could lose the Chargers game. Uh, so I, didn't I, I picked them to lose to the Chargers. Yeah, I'm going right. to pick them to beat the Giants. It is going to be a very low-scoring game. However, I do believe that those boys are going to sit in that meeting room this week and get cursed out on that defensive line for not making plays. Uh, I think that defense will be held accountable, and I think that they're going to come back. They're they're going to be a little fired up to play Thursday night. Luckily, it's a good tur- it's a, tur- a quick turnaround that they can you know come back on. Um, and I also think that Heineke, with a little bit of preparation, may be a little bit more on the money early. We saw him, you know, overthrowing guys. He was that adrenaline was pumping when he got called and put in the game. I think with a little bit of a heads up, I think he'll be a little bit more prepared and a little bit more calm going into the game. Um, I mean, pass rating was 111. I mean, you take away those first two overthrows because of the adrenaline, he hit almost everything. Right. And that's what I was talking about. That first drive, he. He was overthrowing guys like crazy, but that's, like you said, that was the adrenaline pumping. Uh, I'll take the Giants. I mean, I'm sorry. I'll take Washington, uh, and I'm going with the under as well. I think that both defenses are improved. Uh, I could see this being a 21-17 type game. Yeah, I could too, just the other way. So, do you see the Caesars commercial for the Caesars betting? Yeah, with Pat Oswald. That's, it's an awesome commercial series, you know. Caesars, yeah, I, I think it's awesome. Hey, this I'm isn't not, on the sheet. When when does Maryland get online gaming? Uh, well, what I was told recently is they're still working on this provision down in Annapolis that says that the betting parlors, or whatever you want to call them, have to have enough cash on hand to pay everybody should they have a bad night. All right, I don't really know. I don't think that's really fair because, geez, man, you've been talking about a million bucks or more in cash reserves. You know, what you need is Ridiculous. a lot where you can cash because a lot of them say, hey, within 24 hours. So that's what's holding things up. And when they're going to be done, I don't know. That's Yeah, because it just sucks. Like I, there's billboards on 301 heading, you know, into Virginia talking about uh, the, the wind bet app or whatever, the wind, wind something, you know, and it says only available in D.C. and Virginia. And it's like, come on, man. I live a mile from the from the Virginia border, but I don't feel like driving over the bridge just to place a bet. Yeah. Well, the other thing, but crowd prediction, I'm going to say 55,000 and about 30 some are going to be Giants fans. Yeah, it's a short train ride. I don't see why not. Plus, look, it's D.C. It's a transient area. There's a lot of guys from New York that want to go to the game and see their guys because. I don't know what ticket prices look like, but I'm, I, w- I was told you could buy a ticket yesterday afternoon to go to the game. Yeah, well, 5% of D.C.'s population in the city alone are transplanted New Yorkers. Mm-hmm. Because they were down after 9-11. Mm-hmm. And we've always had New Yorkers down here, but we have more than ever. So that's who's going to be going to the game. I mean, the guys from up north could come down, but by and large, it's locals who are Giants fans. I know plenty of them. Um, so they're like Dallas fans. Ugh. But I think that it'll be – they won't have the home edge again. I think Washington fans are just sitting on the side. TV ratings were down 7% from last year's first game. I think people are just waiting and seeing, you know, waiting to see if they want to like it. They're going to like the new name. They're going to do all these things. I saw fans were singing hail to the Redskins after the one touchdown finally uh, on that. So, you know, they're just kind of hanging out. One last thing before we go, I watched Max Scherzer – Hit, throw his 3,000 strikeout, and I hate the ever living bleep out of him standing there in a Dodgers uniform. It hurts, God. man. It hurts. I mean, he's been like 6 and 0 with the Dodgers. Good for him. I'm happy for Max. God, do I hate watching that. Yeah, it hurts. All right. We got to get out of here before we start hurting. I'm, Rick <laughs> I'm Matt. And we'll be back uh, soon. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent on the Hogstye Network.